Hi, I'm Harvey Havel. I'm the author of 18 books, and this book that I'm talking with Mr. Nagel about is called The Odd and the Strange. Well, the book is a collection of very short fiction. Each, each story is only three to five pages, and they're mostly stories about horror, surreal, uh, fabulous fiction, uh, each story very short and very imaginative, I would say. Um, it orig uh, the project originally started as actually a website that I was uploading all of these stories to called the New Surrealist Institute. He had a bunch of people just submit uh, a bunch of sur surrealist short stories, and that's where the idea came came from. And so I decided to write a bunch of really short stories uh, encompassing horror, um, the surreal, fabulous fiction. A string of them was written over a period of, I would say, about a year while I was submitting to this website, uh, the New Surrealist Institute. And then there were a bunch of other stories that I created after that. Usually I write fiction novels. Um, basically general interest fiction. I wrote a story about a guitar player, very, very stuff based on, on, on realism. I'm, I'm, I'm very much in the camp of, of being a, a realist author. Uh, but in this case, this was totally off the charts. Uh, I've, I've, I've never written anything like this uh, before. And uh, it, was, it was really hard work actually to try to tap that uh, imaginative uh, part of my mind uh, to write these stories because otherwise, my other novels, I have about 18 books, you know, and my other novels are pretty much uh, very realist books, you know, uh, very, very concrete on the ground books. And this is just a flight of the imagination, really. For one thing, I've written other short story collections, right? But I think what's important about this is that it combines many genres into one book. Okay, as I said, there was sci-fi in there, there's horror in there, and there's, and there's, all, there's also um, a political satire in there that's imaginative. There's a story about Donald Trump that's in there. Um, and this was before he was elected president, okay? This was, um, this was while he was running for president. No one had any idea that he would become the president of the United States, but there's a highly you know, funny story about Donald Trump in there where, where he's, a, he's, a, he's a parking lot attendant. You know, and he tries to, you know, and he, and he, and he protects the, you know, the very fancy cars from all the junk cars. And I think there's, there's these two kids in New York who are Puerto Rican kids trying to get into the, into the parking lot. And it's this whole funny thing about how he reacts to them. And uh, so there's all of these genres combined into one book, I think is what, 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 what makes this book important. Um, I was born in Lahore, Pakistan in uh, 1971 came over to the United States when I was an infant, moved to Buffalo. And then I grew up basically in the tri-state area. That's uh, uh, Connecticut, New York, and, and New Jersey. Uh, I grew up in that area, mostly in, in the city area. Manhattan pretty much is where I grew up. And I went to school in, uh, in uh, Western Connecticut. Where and right now I'm in Albany, New York. I've been here for about 15 to 16 years. I've been writing here ever since. I've been writing ever since college, really, for about 30 years like this. Because Albany has different sections and different neighborhoods. I've lived in very nice neighborhoods. I've lived in sort of neighborhoods that are really challenged, like the ghetto, the hood, however you want to call it. That would, I actually, I actually in, like living there. I, I, I enjoyed it. Most people are scared of living in, you know, these neighborhoods that are sort of the hood, but they're actually very accepting towards me anyway. I think these days you have to appeal to the short, you know, uh, uh, the reader who likes short fiction because usually people either don't have time to read uh, very long works or are just compromised by other media that's out there uh, to read very long novels. So this was a very short work and I think that's what the most important thing about it is. Did you find that writing shorter pieces made the stories feel incomplete to you or that you were leaving something out? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 left, I left more of it open to interpretation. 
you know, instead of more explanation on my part, more of, instead of leading the reader through a beginning, a middle and an end, the, I kind of left it open ended so the reader can interpret what was being written more openly and, and a bit more towards the reader's point of view than my own. I don't know if that makes any sense. But um, I, I think um, I did leave a lot out in terms of, um, you know, like I didn't explain too much about each character or I didn't um, go into too much detail about, about, about the plot or a plot of each story or anything like that. They're very, uh, they're very short again. So, you know, I, I think, um, I think I just left it, left it open to interpretation. When were you writing these stories? Was anything unusual going on in your life at the time? Um, well, for one thing, um, I think it was a good time in my life. For one thing, I was, I was, I was pretty much on steady ground. Um, I, I had a lot of input from, from this uh, poet, John Thomas Allen, who, whom, whom I was submitting, the, submitting these stories to online. Um, and pretty much everybody had a favorable, I was, I was also very productive at the time, doing a lot of things. Um, you know, I was paying my bills, you know, <laughs> you know? I mean, I was, I was, I, I, I was in a good, good frame of mind while writing this, you know, I, I, I think these were happier days when I was writing this book, even though, even though the stuff's in it, not uh, the stuff that's in it is not so happy, but, you know, I, I think I was, I was, I, I was doing pretty well during that time. Definitely people who like paranormal stuff. Definitely. There's a lot of that in there. Uh, I would say people who read Stephen King maybe would like it. Uh, people who would read um, sort of anything dealing with fabulous fiction. Uh, people who like Salvador Dali paintings, you know, I mean, just people, people who generally like imaginative speculative stuff that actually makes sense. Mm -hmm.